Have a look at more detail, Kevin Maguire, Associate Editor of the Daily Mirror is with us, along with Sheeta Gunn, who was John Major's press advisor when he was Prime Minister, and Mark Pack from Lib Dem Voice. Very good morning to all good of morning. you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Sheeta, I wonder if I could start with you. There is a trite answer, isn't there, in uh, political circles? And it will be the, the <laughs> mid -term message. Midterm blues. It's, it's midterm blues. Now, does that cover it? I think it does to a large extent. Um, I th there, there are always going to be bad results, I think, for the Conservatives. But I think they've been exaggerated to some extent. That, you know, having had quite a good first 18 months of government, I mean, the last couple of months have been awful. I mean, you know, they, they've made so many mistakes, the coalition government. So do you I'm see, do you see then, a direct correlation? Two, two months of, of bad stories coming out of the party. Yes, I do. Bingo, yep. bad results. Yep, really? Absolutely. I think there is. But I really feel sorry for those individuals, those people who have been really good councillors who have now lost their seats because of what's happening nationally, the perception nationally. OK, what about the Lib Dems, Mark? I mean, they've had a, a really bad night. Absolutely. Very, very tough set of results. I mean, friends of mine I've known for decades, you know, are among the people who have lost their seats, so shouldn't downplay that at all. Mm -hmm. I think the crumb of comfort that there is for the Lib Dems is if you look at the results in areas where there are Liberal Democrat MPs, you know, the areas that really matter for the party's future at the next general election, actually they've been really quite good in many places. In Eastley, Lib Dem votes up again, won every seat in the constituency. Uh, in John Pugh's constituency up in the northwest, won six out of seven seats in the constituency for the first time and so on. So it's a very mixed picture. Picture, but the you know, tough it, set of results. And there's a little low bit of progress. A, a historic from, low. Uh, yeah, it, there's a little bit of progress from last year. It looks like, but certainly not not nearly as much as the party needs uh, over the future future election years. So, Kevin, mm. the Labour Party this morning they needed this. I mean, the, the fact is they needed these results to be good, yeah. and they are good. Yeah. But does this give Ed Miliband sort of the breath of life that he needed amidst a lot of criticism? I think it does that. Uh, whether we can build on it, we, we'll see. And how much is it a vote against the coalition people thinking, look, we don't like austerity, we don't like the unfairness, we don't like the incompetence, we don't like the touch of sleaze that's, that's coming. And how much is it, is it is a positive vote for Labour? That we don't really know yet. Now, 39% is, is, is good. You could even say very good. Not brilliant. You don't do cartwheels because it's not 40% uh, and above. And, of course, the Conservatives are waiting for Boris in London, who is really a personality. He, he's won despite the hiding the blue rosette, almost hiding he was a Conservative. Well, we expect he's won anyway. Uh, that, that'll happen. And they will seize him. So it is good for Ed Miliband. It's much better for Ed Miliband than it is for Nick Clegg or, or David Cameron. But, but, I think he'd, uh, he'd be making a mistake if he, if he ran away with this result. Also, of course, we don't have the results as yet in Scotland yeah. either. And would, could that make a big difference too? It, it could. Certainly in Glasgow, where there's a big SNP challenge. Labour's got a lot of parliamentary seats in Scotland and has been suffering on the back foot for a long time now with the the SNP. So it could be that the Labour celebrations are actually dented by uh, Boris Johnson in London mm -hmm. and the SNP in Scotland. Sheila, can I ask you, how, how, how does David Cameron play this one? Because uh, the accusation, as we're told by people on the doorstep, yes. is that they see him as being out of touch. Now, if he writes this off as saying, oh well, it's just midterm blues, isn't he playing almost more to that notion that <coughs> he's, he's ignoring us again, even when we voted against? Yes, no, I think he's got to show that, um, that you know, recognise that there have been mistakes in the last uh, couple of months. And I think they're planning some sort of relaunch, you know, this summer. There'll be a reshuffle later on. We've got obviously the Queen's speech next week as well. So, no, I mean, he can't just sort of say um, this doesn't matter, because, particularly because of the individuals involved as well. So I think it's quite a difficult one for him to play and it could be quite crucial to what happens, you know, to him over the next year. Mm. And for Nick Clegg personally, I mean, he has power. He sat in a position of mm. power and yet, I mean, it, it's almost as if you got the one thing mm. they very much wanted and then simultaneously something is disappearing mm. beneath them. Well, certainly suffering from midterm blues because you're in government is massively preferable to never being in government, which seemed to be <laughs> the party's fate for many, many decades previously. And there is an ironic twist that bad set of election results absolutely this week, but also this week. Uh, we saw the Protection for Freedoms Bill become an act, a you know, major set of moves to improve our civil liberties, long, long-term Liberal Democrat campaign actually implemented. Similarly, last week, the Green Investment Bank made its very first loans. So there is that real contrast between delivering Lib Dem policies but not yet getting enough Lib Dem votes in return. Thank you all very much. You're with us right this morning. I know we'll talk to you later. Thank you, Kevin, uh, Sheila and Mark. Thanks. Six Let's talk to Kevin Maguire, Associate Editor of The Daily Mirror. Sheila Gunn. He was John Major's press advisor when he was Prime Minister, Mark Pack from the Lib Dem Voice. Uh, if I can start with you, Kevin, 
one of the things that's emerged from this, um, we need to be a bit careful, don't we? Because so few people have voted, and there's a real sense of apathy about what's going on. Yeah. It's a it's a bit of a dangerous time, isn't it, politically, for all three parties to agree to, generally. But Labour Party, I guess, can take some satisfaction. It is. Labour can take some. Results are good. You might argue even very good, but they're not brilliant. Shouldn't cartwheel because, as you say, the turnout is low, but they are still real voters. Now, I, I recall when Neil Kinnock and Labour mm. in the 1980s would win local elections. Didn't do him any good at a general election. Mm. Ian Duncan Smith, as Tory leader, did very good, well in local elections. Didn't even get to a general election. His party, his party ditched him. But, ne but nevertheless... You've got the coalition. It's, we know it's in trouble now, and people are beginning to turn away from it. And the gloss has gone from David Cameron himself because we're in a double dip recession. They're looking incompetent over things like the petrol panic, Abu Qatada, Theresa May not quite knowing what day it was. And also, there's a hint of sleaze uh, around, around Murdoch. So that is, that is a problem for them. But they're waiting for Boris. David Cameron will be waiting for Boris Johnson. If he wins in London today, he'll say it's, it's all all right. But in fact, Boris Johnson, if he wins, has won because he didn't want a blue rosette put on, on him. He won because he is Boris Johnson, ruffles his hair, and that manages to, to get him some, some votes. Um, Sheila, let's just pick up on what... It's been interesting, the sort of tone of interviews that we've um, had here on Breakfast this morning yes. um, and, and the kind of the blame game that in some ways seems to be shifting and William Hague saying Conservatives can't do everything that Conservatives would do if we were governing on our own. Is that a veiled threat? What is it? No, it's just, it's just the reality. It's the fact in a coalition you have to duck and dive a bit. You know, they actually have to take, take into consideration Lib Dem views. What, what, Dem what, what, what happens when that sort of starts manifesting itself in losing not just local election results, perhaps threatening more bigger things than that? I don't think it will. I don't think it will. I mean, but if you think of that, that all those things that Kevin mentioned, you know, what a bad couple of weeks the coalition government has had, you would have thought, actually thought that people would, many more people would turn out and vote for Labour. It still didn't achieve that 40% of the vote. Mm. So uh, I think uh, it says more, you know, it says something, there's, n there's not much draw for any of the parties, I don't think, really, in it. Well, Mark, we were speaking to Danny Alexander mm. a few minutes ago, and uh, they're in a very difficult mm. position, and slightly different from the others, in as much as they are in power, but for the first time they're feeling the heat, aren't they? Because they now know what it's mm. like to be blamed for something. Absolutely, and certainly being in power and suffering midterm blues is much better than the alternative of never being in power. And it's an unusual position the Lib Dems find themselves in because, for example, last week the Green Investment Bank, major Lib Dem policy achievement, started lending its first money. This week we've seen many very good Liberal Democrat councillors lose their seats. So it's a very up and down position. I think what's quite promising from the point of view of the party's longer term prospects is you look under the surface at the results in those areas where there are Liberal Democrat MPs in places like John Pugh's constituency, Chris Hume constituency, Martin Hallward's constituency, all across the country. Those results have often seen Lib Dems gaining votes and gaining seats. Can I just ask, why aren't those would-be Lib Dem voters happy? I mean, they, they, they are in coalition, and Nick Clegg makes much of his what he's achieved, the difference is, why aren't they happy? A lot of it is to do with the economy. So, major Lib Dem achievement in terms of getting big increases in the income tax allowance for people, but if they're also worried about their job, they're worried about rising prices, they're worried about their family's economic prospects, not surprisingly, people don't give the party that much credit for those achievements as yet. A lot rests, obviously, on the state of the economy. Um, just, Kevin, also, I know you picked up this already, the sort of voter, you know, the, the real turnout is really has been yeah. bad, hasn't it? What does that say about what people are thinking at the moment, do you think? I think people feel somewhat powerless. They feel parties don't represent them fully. And there is a, there is a disconnect between the public and, and political parties. And, and probably as they watch now and they see Nick Clegg and William Hague and Billaband all just, you know, coming out with the traditional party lines, it will actually turn them off a bit more. But what really matters to people is the economy. And it, you know, it's there, it's your squeeze living standards, it's your job, it's what's happening to your public services. That's all <coughs> bad, we're back in a double dip, uh, dip recession. Because these elections weren't about that really, although mm. it obviously plays into how people vote. And can I just ask Sheila lastly, for, for David Cameron personally, on the one hand he has to say we're listening, but we've already heard from William Hague, he says, yes, we're listening, but no, we won't change. I mean, that's a very, those two things are impossible to balance up, aren't they? I don't think they are. I mean, he means not really changing <coughs> course, particularly on the economy. Um, you know, there won't be any sort of panic measures and things like that. But they really do act actually have to get that act together to communicate their policies a bit better. Actually, you can go out there and sell them and market them. 
but, you know, but that the is the problem. Better, I, I think feel. people want a plan B on the economy. They, they're actually looking at what's happening. You know, they're looking at their, their budgets, their wallets and purses are emptying. OK, uh, let's leave it much. there. <laughs> Sheila, Mark and uh, mm. Kevin, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And